When we began our studies, we were focusing primarily on SUS Enterprise 9. Now we've moved on to SUS Enterprise 11, and we'd like to show you some other useful utilities included with MySQL 5x that you may find of use. So let's log in to the SUS Enterprise 11 system as a non-privileged user. And once on, we'll unlock the environment. Let's just ensure that we've got the right password entered. So we'll create a desktop, we'll launch gedit and continue taking notes. So again, we began with SLES 9 and we launched MySQL in that environment by downloading at the time the latest MySQL binaries. We're still within the 5x series. Currently the latest is 5.1. We installed 5.0 with a minor release. The version that's included with SLES 11 is still in the 5.0 series. So over the course of roughly four years, nothing much has changed in that regard. So let's look at this new or additional utility, MySQL Show. This utility is a front end. So it's a front end to SQL or SQL show statements. And it's a front end because it's compiled as a binary utility that we may access from the shell. So we call it and it gives us a level of detail about various levels of the hierarchy. A typical DB hierarchy ranges from the database itself, the core container, to one or more tables managed by the core container, to one or more columns managed per table. So it's database table column hierarchy. So it's a front end and what it really does for you is enumerates without you having to log into the terminal monitor or a front end such as a query analyzer. It enumerates information about the three tiers of the hierarchy. Databases, tables, and columns. Now it doesn't return the data stored within tables and columns, but rather descriptions are returned. So it returns metadata. So let's just note, when we say information we mean metadata. And of course this metadata can be quite helpful because it will explain to you the structure of a given object. So it's an object query analyzer that's rather precise, rather direct. Let's save our documentation. This will be included in the docs subdirectory along with the original documentation. We'll label this Linux CBT DBMS edition updates notes.txt and all updates will be posted to this file for subsequent releases of updates. So let's set up some tasks and of course one is to explore the environment and the other is to explore MySQL show. Again as a front end for SQL show statements. If you're a DBA then you will be familiar with SQL show statements which return information about a DB and if not, then it can be quite useful for you. So let's control shift T to launch a new shell. When we tab out my, we see a number of utilities. We're familiar with most of these utilities. We haven't looked at some of them. We will be looking at some of them, including my SM check, as well as my SQL check to see how you may check your databases and tables and columns for corruption and repair them if necessary. So these are the binaries that are in our path as a non-privileged user. Let's RPM query all, grep case and sensitive search for MySQL. This will return the, the various packages that are installed. And we see that the MySQL version is 5.0, release 67. So we're still within the 5.0 series. SUS Enterprise 11 still is not at 5.1, which is considered current 5.145 currently. So with that said, let's explore this MySQL show command. So our database server contains a couple databases, a few actually. Let's connect to it using the MySQL terminal monitor. So we'll connect as root, be prompted for the password, and we'll be on momentarily. Show databases.
And there are the databases managed by this instance of MySQL. There are two databases in use for a staging version of the Linux CBT website. The default information schema, MySQL, and test. What would have changed since we began our studies is the information schema. MySQL has always been there, so have test, so has been test, which typically should be dropped. So normally to ascertain information about these objects within the terminal monitor or query analyzer, we execute SQL statements, whether show statements or other statements such as describe a, a current table. For example, if we use MySQL and show tables, we see a number of tables and we can always describe a table such as user, which returns the information that MySQL show would have returned, which of course is the metadata that we're, we're referencing. So if we scroll towards the top, we'll see the column headers that pertain to this particular table, the user table. So the table consists of the following fields and of various types. So on the left, we see the fields such as host, user. As we know by now, a user credential c consists of user part at host part. So both of these fields or columns constitutes constitute a user's credentials, user at host. And we have ways of wildcarding either component, most prefer preferably the host component so that a user may connect from any host. So on the right, we see the descriptions associated with each of the columns on the left, meaning their data types, whether or not null values are accepted, whether or not their keys for or indexes for the table, whether or not their default values supplied for the field when a new record is entered and data are not submitted for the particular column. So for example, if you create, let's say, a new record entry and you neglect to specify the password, no default will be supplied and null isn't allowed. So you'll be unable to create a user unless you supply a password. But for some fields, there may be auto-generated values. So long story short, describe table returns the metadata that MySQL show returns from the command line, making it quicker for you to be able to query this metadata or these met metadata. So let's quit the terminal monitor interface, returning us to the shell. Now when we execute MySQL show, it dumps, just like the other commands, a bunch of options. In this case, since we've specified nothing, it attempts to, or would have attempted, had we let it, to connect to the local instance as the local user at the local host. Let's run it with a help option. And here are the numerous options supported by the program akin to the other MySQL clients. So we, we're just scrolling past the area that describes the order of config file processing. So as we scroll down, we see the usages as follows. MySQL show optionally options. We know that they're optional because we just executed MySQL show with no options and it attempted to enumerate the top level of the hierarchy from our MySQL server instance. So options are optional in this case. And so are these other objects, database, table, and column. These options or object options represent the three tiers of a typical DBMS, database, table, and column. They may be optionally presented. If not present, then the MySQL show command simply lists information metadata about the top level objects. Those are the databases, of course. So let's just note to a, a simple MySQL show invocation attempts to at least enumerate information about the managed databases. Let's try it with authentication to see what's returned. And of course, if you've got your password supplied on the command line, then the info will be returned rather seamlessly. So MySQL user root prompt. Otherwise, the client will attempt to connect to the server as the user Linux CBT because that's who we're currently logged in as. And we'll need to ensure in that case that there is a user named Linux CBT on the server. And indeed, there is. We could check the grants table. But with that said,
let's have it prompt us for a password, then supply the password. And if correct, what you see is the metadata pertaining to the top-level containers. In databases, top-level containers, or in DBMSs, top-level containers, are, again, are databases. So here's that metadata. So that simple MySQL show has quickly told us that there are n number of databases. We can visually see that there are five databases. So that gives us a snapshot. Perhaps this becomes useful with some other process that we ultimately parse out using awk, grep, set, etc. There's an optional count option. Let's go ahead and turn on that count option and indicate the credentials for the user to log in. Once we specify count, then just like when you're within the terminal monitor environment, the number of records returned by the query, in this case the show statement, is evident. It's apparent. So you know how many records were returned. So simple invocation, MySQL with the requisite user, username in our case, which is root, we prompt for password, and the optional count returns a count of returned records or values or results. They're all one and the same. So five came back. That's the top level. Let's drill down just a little bit more. So we know that there are five databases under management. How about giving us more information about a specific database, such as the MySQL database? So similarly, if we execute MySQL, authenticating with the count option followed by the name of the database, which is top level, this will then enumerate metadata about the contained tables. So let's have it authenticate us. And now we see the individual tables managed by the MySQL database. So their columns priv through user and everything in between. Also, notice the count information per table as well as the number of rows returned. So this tells us quickly that the MySQL database contains 17 rows. Now, of course, you can get this information from a GUI manager such as PHP MyAdmin or Query Analyzer, but it's neat to know that the shell tool exists for performing it so that you can parse it otherwise. And again, it also returns the number of columns and the total number of rows per contained table. So that's useful metadata. Let's just note that. So 2C is an optional invocation would be MySQL. Authenticate, of course, prompt. Return a count of records returned. Top-level database returns metadata about the MySQL DB, including table or the columns. So columns in table, of course, as well as the various tables, which is what we were referencing initially, so let's include that as the first option. So tables, columns, let's take a look at that again, and the total number of rows. So total num of rows, which can give you a sense as to the distribution of your rows across tables. So for example, the help underscore relation table contains the most rows. Most of the tables are empty. There are four defined users. Now they may be all one and the same, or maybe perhaps two users, because if you recall, users are really the synthesis of the user's name and the host component, which oftentimes ends up resulting in the same user represented perhaps twice or more. But a simple select could tell you that, of course, from the mysql.user table. So when we drill to the database level, we get information about the levels beneath the database level. So the MySQL show utility is essentially traversing or walking the tree from the top level, from the root, which is the database container, to all levels below. And as you drill or help the utility to walk, then it shows you information about the lower levels of the hierarchy. So 
Wherever you index it or root it, it'll cause the utility to show you levels beneath. For example, let's drill a little bit deeper. Same authentication, same prompt for password, same count. Same database, but now let's go to the table level, a particular table. Now we know the tables that exist. And then this, of course, returns info one level below the DB, and that's the table level, which will return by default a synopsis of the column information or the columnar information, since there should be multiple columns defined in the user table. So let's control shift V to paste that in, and let's check our options here. That should be MySQL show, not MySQL. It prompts us and then we'll authenticate the old fashioned way. And now we see information about the defined columns, just like describing the table, which includes, of course, the name of each column and all of the associated attributes. It's type, car 60, car 16, so on and so forth. Enumerated binary, yes, no. Collation, how the information is organized, whether or not null values are permitted, whether or not the column is a primary key. As we can see, there are two primary keys because, again, users consists, consists of username at hostname. Whether or not their default value supplied, any extra information and privileges associated with the connecting user. So the connecting user root in this case has full privileges, select, insert, update, and references for this particular table. So back to our notes for a moment. It returns info one level below the DB by describing the specified table, which is effectively a described table. So it's a SQL describe table command. In this case, the table name is user, so describe user. So it's effectively the same dump. Now there's some other ways you may return information. Now we've gotten this hierarchy of we're gotten to a hierarchy of the table and it's told us what's there for example if we scroll up mysql is the database the table is user and it contains four rows we get a synopsis at the top and because we didn't specify a distinct column all columns were returned that's the default behavior of the utility let's just note that when we reach a hierarchy default behavior is to return all columns if a single column is unspecified which leads us to the next invocation 2e so that means we must be able to execute mysql show and let's fix this command so it's not committed to long-term memory which is the dvd that we ship and that means we should be able to drill one level lower. So we know that within the user table, there are a number of columns. So supposing we wanted specific information about the host column, then we drill yet even deeper, and that'll take us to the host column. So this drills to the host column or to the column level of the hierarchy. Of course, We've summarized the hierarchy to be DB table and beneath table, you've obviously got one or more columns. Let's copy this command and paste it into the shell and evaluate how it behaves. First, we'll reset the buffer, then control shift V to authenticate. We're always prompted unless we supply the password. And now we see still a synopsis of information pertaining to the object that's selected or that was referenced. In this case, we referenced the host column. And in the host column, there are four rows, or there are four instances of this host column. Meaning, in the database, in this table user, there are four records of which host participates in. So there are a number of columns that constitute those records that belong to the user's table, which belong to the MySQL database. So here are the details about the specific column. Its name, its type, collation, whether or not nulls are permitted, whether or not it's a primary key or an index, 
for the table. If the fault values are supplied, any extra instructions and privileges of the connecting user. So now we get information at even at an even more granular level. Now let's dump the previous dump at one level above, which is the table level, to show you another thing that you can do with the MySQL show utility. Now I realize that many, in this case, columns have been returned. Supposing we wanted to wildcard our MySQL show command as we would within SQL using show statements to return, let's say, columns that contain a particular string. For example, there are a number of columns that contain PRIV or PRIV which pertain to rights that are associated with a given user when accessing various databases. So let's show you how you could use wildcards. There are a number of ways wildcards or a number of meta characters supported by MySQL show. And we'll just show you one simple invocation. We'll have it count the records returned. And we'll drill down to the MySQL and in this case the user table. Now if we wanted to return all of the columns that contain priv we could use for example percent priv. Percent is understood by SQL compliant databases to mean a wildcard for anything. So percent priv returns columns that contain priv, terminating in priv. So returns columns terminating with the key string PRIV. Again, that might be of interest to help you drill down to specific columns. You may have a table with, let's say, hundreds of columns named very distinctly in MySQL show, which is a front end, allows you to focus in on that information. So let's reset the buffer once more, including our wildcard, and this will prompt us momentarily for credentials which will supply gladly. And now as we scroll through the dump, you'll see that every single column returned terminates with PRIV. Now certainly there are other columns. However, just the ones that are of interest are returned with the same column headers, field, type, collation, null, all the way through comment. So these are the privileges columns associated with the mysql.user table. So using wildcards allow you to pull that information out. Asterisk is also supported, as well as other meta characters, but you'll find that the common meta character used in SQL statements is percent, which transcends the version of the DBMS and the platform. So we can look at that information rather straightforwardly by using MySQL show to effectively perform a describe of the object level that's of interest to us, starting with the top level, which MySQL show shows us. It gives us the databases managed. Then we drill down to a specific table, such as the MySQL table. And then that returns the columns within. Then we go one level below to a specific column which returns metadata about that particular column. Each time you invoke MySQL show, you get a synopsis which includes the hierarchy path, which starts with the database, moves on or progresses to the table level. It tells you the number of rows, and if a wildcard was supplied as it was in the most recent invocation, then that's indicated as well. So MySQL show is a useful, nifty utility. Now insofar as order of processing, if you execute MySQL show with help, that's essential otherwise it attempts to connect and enumerate the databases. You'll see as you scroll through the documentation towards the middle section in this region that directives are read first from the global file which still is etcmy.cnf despite the fact that we're running a later version of SUSE Enterprise Linux followed by a hidden my.cnf in the user's home directory. So if there are directives that are of interest to you that you'd like to apply to yourself, place them in your home directory in a hidden my.cnf. If you're the administrator of a system and would like to make those directives available to all users for consistency, place them in etc my.cnf. However, remember that the most recently read item, which would be an item read from the user's home directory, will override. So if users are running their own options, then they could potentially override
options that you have specified. Now, in addition, these groups are read by the MySQL show utility. In any of the config files, if there's a group section beginning with MySQL show or and or client, they'll be read for directives and processed accordingly. Any of the directives that you see following this section can be defined in the MySQL show and, my, and client blocks of the global as well as the user my.cnf hidden file. And the standard options, such as whether or not to use compression, which port to connect to, whether or not to prompt for a password or to take the password on standard in, and a number of other options. Now there is this switch I which turns on additional metadata or reveals additional metadata about a given table. And then there's a keys option which is also useful for showing you just the indexes on a table. For example, supposing you're writing a PHP script that will ultimately connect to a MySQL database and you're doing it without, let's say, the MySQL query analyzer or otherwise, and you wanted to know which columns for given tables are the indexes so that you can either target them, update them, or make changes, or whatever suits your application. Returning the keys might be a useful invocation for you, as opposed to, again, using phpMyAdmin or some other utility to pull that information up. So another invocation that's come to mind is MySQL show authenticate prompt count and return the keys from the MySQL user table. Notice we don't specify the path by separating with a dot delimiter as you normally would with standard query analyzers. We simply use a space delimiter. So let's just note that this dumps indexes on mysql.user. So whatever indexes are defined, we know currently there are two indexes and they are for the user and the host columns. And rightfully so because those are supposed to be unique items when concatenated. So let's authenticate and see what comes back in this particular invocation. And notice that the two that are returned, let's just scroll up, there's a big dump. As we scroll towards the top, we see the various columns. And then we also see, after the dump of the columns, the keys for the column, the indexes for the column, or for the table, that is, the two columns that are the indexes for the table. So these are those indexes. And the type and so on are returned. And on the left we see that they're tied to the user table, but towards the middle, beneath the column name header, we see the distinct field names or column names. One is host, one is user. When you put these two together in a query, as MySQL does when authenticating a connecting user, two records should never result in the same concatenated value. And that's why the two are listed as keys. They should be indexed and available for fast access for authentication purposes. So that's one way to run things. And as we've mentioned, there's an I option which returns additional information. Let's not dump the keys that yield superfluous or additional information may not be superfluous depending on what information you need from the server. But now notice when we dump with the I option, we get some additional goodies, including the engine associated with the table even on a columnar level, but in this case we get a synopsis that applies to the entire table. Normally, tables are assigned to a specific engine and it governs all of the columns in the engine normally. So the engine for this particular table is MyISAM, which is the standard, the version, the format. These are columns we didn't see before because they're usually not that useful. Average row length, which may or may not be of use, the data length, so on and so forth. Auto increment, when it was created, when it was last updated. So here's when it was created, it was last updated at that time, the check time, checksum associated with it, and so on. So let's just note that this is another useful invocation. Again, you may be able to use this information from other processes, shell script or Perl script or some other type of script that you're in the process of writing. So the I option, MySQL user, 
dumps additional metadata. For example, engine, timestamps, etc., which may or may not be of use depending on your application. So just a quick recap, there's this additional utility MySQL shell. We're using the default build of MySQL that's included with SUSE Enterprise 11. This utility MySQL show is also available on all other modern distributions of Linux, including Red Hat, Ubuntu, Debian, etc. And it provides us with some rather useful information from the shell that we could incorporate into some other scripted fashion. But of course, this information is returnable using SQL show statements. So it's merely a front end, but a rather useful one.